Hi, Kieran Stone here. In this video, I'll give you a rundown about why you should start using Photoshop, especially if you're just using Lightroom. I know it can be daunting thinking of the complexity of Photoshop, especially when you see meticulously prepared composites that look like they've taken hours to make, but Photoshop can be as basic as you need it to be as well, only becoming more challenging and in-depth as your understanding of it grows. You'll never be able to start with a comprehensive understanding of Photoshop. It takes time and practice and you need to be able to make mistakes in order to grow and develop. I'm not expecting to be able to teach you everything in this short video, but at least you should be able to have the confidence to just start playing around and seeing what is capable out of your images in Photoshop. So I'm going to start with a raw file from Sydney, Harbour, uh, Sydney Opera House and I've opened it up in Adobe Camera Raw from Adobe Bridge. If you've used Lightroom before, then all this will be very familiar to you. It's basically the same thing, just in a different interface. Uh, so you've got your basic um, exposure adjustments, tonal curve, sharpening, hue saturation, split toning, lens correction, uh, as well as crop tools, adjustment tools, etc. Um, I've just made some basic adjustments to the exposure here, starting with this was the original image and this is what we've done in Camera Raw. So we'll open it up in Photoshop and have a look at that. This comes later. So when your photo opens up into Photoshop, uh, you've got a lot of different tools everywhere and um, you won't use all of them, but the main thing that you'll be focusing on is this layers panel here. So Photoshop runs with layers, uh, which means it's just a stack of different adjustments on top of your background image in order to create a final product. For instance, if I was to create a new layer on top of my background, all this is is a transparency. So anytime you see these white and gray checker pattern means it's transparent. And if I was then to draw a, say, a, oops, wrong thing, that was the eraser. If I was then to draw a black A on top of my image, then I'm not actually affecting the background image underneath. I've just added a transparent layer with a black A on it. And if I was to create another layer, and draw a white B on top, then that's covered the A, which is then covering the background image. And if I turn those off, I've still got my background image here. So this is where what basically Photoshop is, a set of different layers of adjustments. So you can see this has been the top down view, seeing the B first, the A underneath, and then the image background right at the bottom. And over here you've got your side view, you could call it, with your background at the bottom, your A and then the B. So the order of these starting from bottom to top is important. Important. So I can move this B underneath the A, and now I've got the A on top, the B underneath, and then the background. So that's basically how Photoshop works, by having just a set of instructions in order stacked up on top of each other. But you're not going to be drawing A's and B's, so we'll get rid of those. The main things you're going to be using are these adjustment layers in very basic terms. For instance, a curves adjustment layer will just bring up your histogram or tonal curve where you can either brighten the image, darken it, add contrast, etc. So similar things that you'd be doing in Lightroom as well, or you might be used to in Lightroom. And once I've created that layer, I can either decide that that's too much of an effect. So I can go to my opacity, I can make it anywhere from 100% down to zero, and just find where I like it. So I might like it around 80%. And if I created another one, I could 
maybe brighten up the image a bit. But if I didn't want the whole image brighten, I could create what's called a layer mask. So the layer mask is usually or almost always attached to an adjustment layer whenever you create a new adjustment layer. And this is a way to stop an adjustment from affecting certain areas of the image. For instance, it's all white at the moment. That means that the whole image is affected. But if you draw black anywhere, so if I just start with the layer mask selected, just start drawing black, you can see that that's taking out that effect. So that's saying wherever this layer mask is black, don't let that brightness affect the image. But you can be a bit more useful as well by using a gradient and creating a nice adjustment here where it's saying I want the effect to take place in the middle and then gradually fade out. So you can see with just two simple adjustments you can make the image a lot brighter and stand out a bit more, look a little less flat. You can do lots of other things, you can add more saturation to all your different color channels as well. Maybe the yellow is too much, maybe the blue is a bit too much. And again you can change the opacity. So there's just some simple adjustments that you can do. But you can take it a bit further as well. So as well as doing, say, a simple set of adjustments, you can go a bit more advanced and make it a little more controlled and refined, get rid of some of the big distracting features. Or you can go completely bonkers. It's up to you. But unless you actually start learning Photoshop and learning what all these functions do, you'll never be able to get something creative like this out of Lightroom. So just have a go, start with any image that you've got, start playing around, see what all these different things do, watch different YouTube videos and tutorials. You can go to my website, kieranstone.com, download some full edits that I start from raw files, going into Camera Raw and then into Photoshop, or just have a play around and see what you can do with your photos. Is if you don't start now, you'll never be able to know how far you can take it with Photoshop. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video and my other videos, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.